Lads Rush training here. It's two o'clock, it's Tuesday, so as we're trying to do now, we're trying to broadcast to you some little facts and information, first aid stuff, things that we're doing on the courses, etc. And what I thought we'd do this afternoon is we'll quickly show you how to use, or some of the uses, of the Olaes dressing. Probably mispronouncing it, O-L-A-E-S. I'd like to hear from you how you think you pronounce it. It's one of the main dressings that we're seeing in the first aid courses and on the first aid kits that we deliver. Very popular with some of our media clients, very popular with some of our close protection security clients. And they are just popping up here and there and everywhere. You can buy them on the internet. Uh, if anyone's interested in that kind of stuff, just drop us a comment on here or comment on the Facebook page itself and we can send you some links to where you can buy them from. Now, originally designed for the American military, probably tell that from its packaging, the colour of it and some of the logos. Probably one of our favourite bandages that we're seeing in trauma kits at the moment though. It's one of these ones that, they call it modular, so it's got all sorts of different uses, different factors and stuff. Now, one argument is that anything that tries to do four or five jobs is never as good as something that's designed to do all of uh, something specific. But we think this is good value for money, good balance of kit and equipment. Now, as with all bandages, it has special points where you can open it up. Strangely, for this one, for reasons we don't fully understand, a lot of them are double wrapped in plastic, so you can always get rid of that wrapper if you, you think it's going to upset people. This one's wrapped in paper, though, and I'm sure there's a good reason. If you know it, comment and let us know. And when we open it up, what we have is a nice sort of meaty bandage. It's designed to give you absolutely everything you need. There's a big pad, and then there's stuff to tie it on with. There's a few other features that we'll mention as we go along. So I just need to borrow Kelly's arm, and imagine that she's got some sort of injury here. The way we describe it to everybody is that this cup that you might be able to see there is your aiming mark. So we get that over the actual wound. And these are elasticated, so the idea is you can pull on it and give it a little bit of tension to secure it down. But as it goes along, they've got a really neat feature built in. When we're bandaging it around, we want to try and keep close to the limb. It's, it's quicker. You get more control over the application of the, the tension. And also you just look cooler if it doesn't all unravel all over the floor. So they've built this in. And when I let go now... It only unrolls a tiny way, because there's little Velcro staves built into it. So I've gone around one end, I come around the other, and that's me secured it in place. Now what we do is we do the hard work, really, of going through the middle, trying to drive that cup, our aiming mark, into the wound to secure it. Now, Velcro, or hook and eye, hook and loop, is coming out in more and more first aid equipment, and here we see nice, easy application of it, fairly tight bandage. You see, I wasn't pulling on it really, really hard. It's elasticated, so it recoils a little bit, and you get nice, firm pressure. You just stick your other hand up, so we can see the two. We can see that there's still blood flow into this area. If I've done it a bit tighter, you start to see the blood vessels are coming up. So that means there's blood flow in, so it's not torn okay. It's just slow coming out. So we can see it's quite a nice, effective bandage. So you can relax the other hand. There is a couple of little tricks built into it, though. There's this clip on the end, and I don't know if you can see there's little teeth built into it. So the idea is I can hook it on and secure it tightly. But it does give me another option as well. If I think the bleeding's pretty bad, I can take this bar bit, tuck it through underneath this loop, over where the cup was, which remember is sort of our aiming marks so is over the wound. And if I twist this now, and I'm not going to do it too much Kelly, so don't worry, but if we twist it, it pulls it tight around and becomes what we call a windlass, because we're applying it directly over the wound. You can feel that getting tight now? Okay, I won't really do it, but you can then secure that in place as putting lots of pressure down through the wound. Now, those of you that have done our law enforcement courses, our charity courses for people working in remote, hostile areas, the media courses for the same, would have noticed that the, the structure of this is very similar to a thing that we teach in those courses called a tourniquet. And in fact, if you apply this upstream of the wound, you can, if you do it really tight, essentially turn it into an improvised tourniquet. Not what we're hoping to do at this point, we're just trying to make it a windless dressing to put uh, a firm amount of pressure onto the wound. Maybe somebody's already applied a towel or something like that, and the bleeding's coming through, we could do that over the top to put some really good pressure on. Now, as I say, we like these LDF dressings because they've got everything you need, but it does have a few little kind of hidden extra tricks. If we come back to the pads, which I just put straight onto the wound, it's actually got an open end. If we open that end up, it reveals two little secret bits in here. One is that we can pull out the padding. Now, the idea of packing wounds has been well established and has been given a bit of a turbocharge in recent years with the idea of what we call clotting agents. But if needs be, if there's a hole in the person, 
we need to pack the wound before we wrap the dressing round and then that can go over the top. Now hidden away in the compartment though is one other little bit as well and that's a small sheet of plastic and again those of you who have done armor trauma based courses will know there's all sorts of different uses for the plastic that is in the back of this uh, pad. Now, if I just tuck them away for tidiness for now there is one final other one that we point out to people and that is our aiming mark that I started right back with. It's actually designed that you can break it off and this cup can be used as a protective area to cover an eye injury, perhaps with a pad going over the top to hold it in place. So there we have it, an OLEF dressing. Our favourite probably at the moment gives you a normal bandage, it gives you the opportunity to do a windlass, it gives you the opportunity to perhaps do an improvised tourniquet, it gives you packing, so if it's a large wound you can pack and wrap there's plastic in there for sealing maybe a chest wound, for covering things that are sticking out, like the abdominal contents. And there's also a little eye cup on there as well for protecting an eye injury. So for somewhere in the region of six, seven pounds, we think they're a very good bandage. Uh, we know that's the price of them because we get through a fearsome amount of these. Uh, tomorrow we've got training running in the Czech Republic, they'll be using these. We've got teams leaving from Stansted Airport and Gatwick tonight with a whole bunch of these stuck away in their bags. And I shouldn't forget Paul Gary driving down to Bristol for us tonight and Tony who's already up in the Manchester area delivering training and all our trainings have got about 20 odd of these in their bags that people can get their hands on and have a good play around. So a short uh, video for today because I'm one of the ones that's off to Stansted and flying off to Scotland uh, for training tomorrow but we just wanted to show you one of our favourite bandages. Any questions, queries or comments just stick them uh, in the Facebook feed and we'll get back to you. Otherwise hope to see you Thursday around 2 o'clock when we'll broadcast if everything works okay, from one of the courses out on the road. See you then. Bye then.